In this video, we review a couple of ways to calculate uh, the change in Gibbs energy in a chemical reaction under standard conditions. All right, so our goal then is for a given chemical reaction reagents to products is to calculate this value, which again would be uh, the reaction gives energy on a per mole basis uh, under standard conditions, which is where generally thermodynamic beta are provided. Right, so it turns out that there's actually two ways to do this. One of them uses the definition of the Gibbs energy as a relationship between the enthalpy of the reaction and the entropy of the reaction. And that relationship is this one. Okay, so this is a perfectly good way to calculate what the reaction gives energy would be for, uh, again, any uh, given reaction under standard conditions, uh, uh, and then generally the data for the calculation of these uh, quantities, the state functions, is provided at 298 Kelvin, so that means that uh, you would also be getting that reaction gives energy at 298 Kelvin. If you had data at other conditions, say non-standard uh, or, or Dentro, uh, different than 298 Kelvin, then this would still apply, but those data are a little harder to come by. Now, uh, let's then review uh, how do we calculate these uh, values. And remember that uh, for uh, the reaction gives uh, enthalpy, the way that we proceeded was simply uh, the sum of the enthalpies of formation of products minus the sum of the enthalpies of formations of reagents multiplied by their stoichiometric coefficients, which, ha which are these news that you have right there. Okay, so for the enthalpy again, what we did is we just uh, look at the products, we looked in tables for enthalpies of formation, uh, multiply by the stoichiometric coefficients, and then uh, subtract uh, the enthalpies of formations uh, that we get from uh, standard tables, uh, multiply by the stoichiometric coefficients to get the reaction one. And for the entropy, we do the same thing, but we do not have uh, entropies of formation. Instead of how we have absolute entropies, also called third law entropies. Right. So that calculation is as follows: the change in more entropy of a reaction under standard conditions would be just the balance of the standard molar entropies of products minus the standard molar entropies of reagents under standard conditions. Okay, so uh, this calculation then of the reaction gives energy looks a little tedious because if you don't have those data directly, you actually have to calculate in using these, these long calculations. A question though is whether we can use something similar, a similar recipe for the Gibbs energy. Notice that entropy and enthalpy are state functions and we're leveraging that, that state function capacity or quality of this uh, enthalpy and entropy to simply set up a calculation in which you just take the final state of the chemical reaction products and then uh, determine what the uh, enthalpy would be uh, for that final state and then subtract the enthalpy of the initial state which would be reagents or the entropy. Right? So can we do something similar for the Gibbs energy in which you would be calculating the Gibbs energy simply as some sort of measure of the Gibbs energy of the final state products minus the Gibbs energy of the initial state reagents. Well, if Gibbs energy is a state function, this should work as well. But it turns out that yes, you can do that, right? But we have to be uh, careful, or at least deliberate, in trying to determine what these values are, okay? The, how do we determine the Gibbs, a measure of the Gibbs energy of products and reagents? Notice that for the enthalpy and the entropy, we have two different ways to define these measures of enthalpy of entro or entropy for individual substances. Notice that for enthalpy, we said that determining the absolute enthalpy of a substance is generally very difficult because it's almost impossible to, to account for all of the interactions that you have between, uh, between particles in a system. Right? So instead, what we actually did is set up an arbitrary scale for enthalpies, which was the enthalpy of formation scale, in which the zero of the scale was set to the most stable allotropes of constituent elements, and then the enthalpies of substances that are not the most stable allotropes, like water, CO2, sucrose, and so forth, were referred to that seal level of uh, zero enthalpy of formation. Okay, but for entropy, we actually had something different. In this case, we actually did not have entropies of formation. Instead, we had absolute uh, more entropies. And that is because the third law gives you the zero directly, 
tells you that uh, for perfectly crystalline substances at zero Kelvin, the entropy is zero. Right, so then uh, it's very, uh, from that theory, it's, it's generally straightforward to obtain what the molar entropy is would be for substances at one bar and the temperature uh, that you're interested in. Right, so then the question is, well, which one of these two routes are we going to be using for the Gibbs energy? Are we going to have a Gibbs energy of formation, or are we going to have uh, absolute more Gibbs energies? Well, because the Gibbs energy is an energy, uh, it seems obvious that, that uh, you're going to have to go through the route of the Gibbs energy of formation. Right? Uh, knowing the absolute Gibbs energy of a substance is impossible because you will need to account for interactions and that is generally very hard to do. So then for uh, the Gibbs energy we can still use this type of recipe but we're going to have to go through uh, the Gibbs energy of formation route. Okay, So the reaction Gibbs energy and the standard conditions will be uh, yes the sum of the Gibbs energy of formation of products uh, multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficient minus the molar Gibbs energy of uh, formation of reagents multiplied by the stoichiometric coefficients reagents. Okay, so again, this follows kind of the same route as what we have there for uh, the enthalpy, and that is because the Gibbs energy is an energy, and it is generally very difficult to measure the absolute uh, Gibbs energy content of a substance. Okay, so just as a reminder, uh, notice that uh, for that scale, uh, we're going to define the most stable allotropes of constituent elements as being the zero, right? So you can build a table, which I'm going to do right here, in which you can say, well, what are the Gibbs energy of formation? of stable allotropes, uh, for example, uh, uh, oxygen for molecular oxygen for oxygen, and molecular hydrogen for hydrogen, and carbon, uh, graphite for carbon, and so forth. These are the more, most stable allotropes uh, of oxygen, hydrogen, uh, carbon. We could continue to build here the table for the entire periodic uh, table. And again, for a definition, we're going to say that the Gibbs energy of formation of all of those substances will be zero. Right, so when you have a different substance like CO2 and water, the only thing that you have to do is uh, refer those Gibbs energies, which can in principle be measured, okay, to the zero, and then you will be uh, ready to go. Okay, so uh, generally when you go, when you look at thermodynamics books, and our book is no exception, when you go to the back page of the thermodynamic data, you are going to have a table or a column with uh, a more uh, standard Gibbs energy formation of substances which are going to add to columns where you have the more standard uh, enthalpy of formation of substances and the more standard uh, absolute entropies for substances. Okay, so well, if you have that table at your disposal, then uh, this is a much easier route to calculate what the uh, standard molar reaction Gibbs energy is, rather than going through this route, because you would need two different calculations. So it's a little easier to make a mistake, right? You would need, you would need first to calculate the standard molar entropy, then the standard molar uh, enthalpy of the reaction, and then uh, put them together using this recipe. Right. So again, if you have data, this route it seems a little easier than that one, and they're going to provide exactly the same results. All right. So this video uh, has summarized a couple of ways to calculate the standard molar uh, change in uh, reaction Gibbs energy. Uh, the first one utilizes the definition of the reaction Gibbs energy. The second one leverages the fact that the Gibbs energy is a state function. So uh, for a reaction, the Gibbs energy is just balance of the Gibbs energies of products minus reagents.